As you may know, I have made over 100 coding tutorials using the open source JavaScript library called P5.js to create beautiful visual outputs such as this one, this one, and this one. They're all on the computer screen, and while there's nothing wrong with that, I thought that we would shake things up, try something new, something different, and that thing is to dive into the world of physical computing. This is where software meets hardware in a way that allows us to create projects that are interactive, tactile, and dynamic. These two worlds are more integrated than you think, and that is exactly what we're going to be exploring in this series. But before we get there, I want to lay out some basics so that we're all on the same page. In this video, I'm going to talk about what physical computing is and why it matters. How we should think about physical computing when getting started. The core components that we're going to be working with. And last but not least, my plan for you and I to explore this world together. Also, I am no expert in physical computing, so we're going to be learning this together as a team. Expect mistakes, breakthroughs, and moments of joy when things work and the opposite when things do not. But fear not, that is part of the fun, right? <laughs> What is physical computing? Physical computing is about designing systems that interact with the physical world through code. You might have heard of the terms Internet of Things, Robotics, or Interactive Art Installations, and these are all examples of physical computing. At its core, it's about connecting sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers to code so that we can make things move, light up, react, and more. Imagine controlling an LED light with a simple hand gesture or the speed of a motor based on the pitch of our voice. And you might not be familiar with some of the terms that I just mentioned, but don't worry, I'll be unpacking each of these as we go on. How should we think about physical computing as we get started? If you have been following my P5.js tutorials, I think that shifting your mindset to physical computing is actually quite intuitive. I would like to put it into three main buckets, inputs, processing, and outputs. And I want to connect three verbs to these three buckets, detect, process, and react. Actually, as a human being, we actually do this on a regular basis. Imagine walking on the street, passing a bakery, and then you smell something very nice coming out of there. Your brain starts to process what is inside. It might be some freshly made bread, and then you start to feel hungry, and then you just think that you want to go in and get some of it. And then what do you do? You walk inside, you pay for the bread, and then you eat it. So with this example, we use our nose to detect the smell, our brain to process the smell while figuring out what to do, and our feet to walk inside the store, and our mouth to eat that piece of bread. These three buckets also apply to our interactive P5.js sketches. Take this one for example. The program detects when a mouse is pressed. The program processes and runs the commands that need to be run when the mouse is pressed, and then the program spills out a bunch of floating random alphabets on the screen as a result of a pressing mouse. Inside the world of physical computing, for example, we want to control an LED light using a simple hand gesture. A light sensor detects the hand as it approaches the sensor, resulting in a certain brightness value. The microcontroller processes and runs the commands that need to be run when the sensor value hits a certain condition. And then the LED light is turned on or off. So you might be wondering, what is a microcontroller? So let's talk about the components. In the context of our three buckets, inputs usually come in the form of sensors. This is how we detect or sense what is happening in the environment around us. In the second bucket, we use a microcontroller to do some processing. This is the brain of our physical computing projects. Based on the name, micro means small and controller means to control. So it is essentially a small computer that we use to control another device. The type of a microcontroller that we're going to use is called an Arduino. Similar to P5.js, an Arduino is a beginner-friendly microcontroller as it is easy to use with a simple coding environment and hardware that is easy to connect. It is also an open source software, making it accessible for a wide range of projects and and it also has a large and supportive community. 
All right, as for the last bucket, outputs usually come in the form of actuators. These are components that create physical action. It's part of the system that makes something happen in the physical world. Now that we talk about the physical components, how about the programming language. The programming language that we're going to use is actually C++, but don't worry, it is a simplified version as this is supposed to be beginner friendly. The great thing is that if you already know some P5.js, the key coding components will feel pretty familiar to you. The language includes special functions which are setup and loop, which act the same exact way as to how setup and draw work in our P5 sketches. Setup is the function that is run once when they are Arduino starts. This is where we initialize things. And loop, just like draw in P5.js, runs repeatedly, allowing us to continuously check inputs and update outputs. Now that I have gone through the basics of physical computing, I hope that it already gets your brain to think about the many possibilities of the type of projects that you can create. The world is your oyster, honestly, and we don't necessarily have to make everything all physical either. We can also connect some sensors to our P5 sketches and make something visually beautiful on the screen. So what is the current plan of how you and I should be exploring this? Here's my current plan. We'll make some simple Arduino projects to dip our toes into the world of physical computing. We'll also integrate it with P5.js to see how we can sense the world around us as an input to create something beautiful on the screen. And then last but not least, we'll also move beyond code and work with some mechanical components. Imagine create something as fun as an egg step sequencer. And if you're wondering if that is a thing, it is a thing and I have made it many, many years ago. So leave it in the comments if you want to see it. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts. What are some of the things that you want to learn about physical computing? What are some of the project ideas and any suggestions on things that you would like to see? I'm really excited and I hope that you are too. And and that is it for this video and see you in the next one. Bye!